and poster. Okay, so the title of the scrapbook okay is uh heart healthiness. Okay, and then the this is the content of your scrapbook. Okay, so structure and function of the heart structure. Okay, heart disease. Uh, heart disease. Okay, people at risk of heart disease. Uh, how to maintain heart health? Important to have healthy heart. A uh, healthy heart and also reference. Okay, so for this scrapbook, I want you to form a group. Okay, so one group consists of four, of four to five people. Okay, and you can use the computer or you can use the, your handwriting. Okay, after you complete the scrapbook, okay, so each of the group have to present, okay, in front of the class or online. Okay, so depend whether the MCO uh, ended at 9 uh, November or not. Okay, and then uh, after the you finish present for each group, so each of the students have to do a poster. Okay, poster about the your scrapbook. Okay, all right, and then next one the due date is for the scrapbook is seventeen uh, November. Okay, so this is the scrapbook your science project. Okay, so I know you cannot uh, meet with your friends. Okay, due to the MCO. So since you have like four or five people in the group, right? So maybe you can divide. So this one, this one topic for one, uh, one student. Okay. So you got like five here. So five students. So each you we get one topic. Then you just combine. Okay. Uh, you can do uh, in a four paper. Okay. Uh, or color paper. Okay, it is up to you. Okay. But make sure the content is there and the limit of the page uh, not less than uh, 10 pages. Okay, not less than 10 pages. Okay, so this is the your project for this year. Okay. Um, so if you have a question, you can uh, you can uh, message me later. Right. So this one I will put in the GC okay, for your reference. Alright. So this is for your science uh, project okay, for this year. This is for PBD, okay? So compulsory, right? So it's a compulsory for all of you. Okay. You have the scrapbook, okay? But make sure must do in the group. Okay, cannot do uh individual, must do in the group. Okay. Alright. So we continue our lesson, okay? So I think uh, last week I stopped until here, right? The heat conductor and the heat insulator. So the last thing, that, the last slide I teach, I think is about the land breeze. All right, so we continue, okay? Heat conductors and heat insulators, okay? So what is the heat conductors? So conductors mean is a matter that can allow heat flows, okay? So that is known as a heat conductor okay usually it's a metal right so this is the function of the heat conductor okay so the base of the iron okay are made of a metal to enable it conduct heat so that that so that clothes can be ironed quickly okay and the bottom of a pan okay is made up of the metal okay so this one is to allow heat to flow so it's easy for the Pen to absorb the heat. Okay, and then the next one is a mercury, uh, mercury in thermometers. So mercury is a good heat conductor. So it easy to expand and also contract. Okay, and it can detect change in temperature very quickly. Okay, so it's, this is called as a heat conductors. Alright, so materials that prevent heat flow are known as heat insulator. So, such as the oven glove, okay, so that a uh, heat insulator can prevent your hands from getting scalded while taking food trays out from the oven, right? So, this is the one of the example of the heat insulator, okay? Alright, next one. So, this one is the wall of uh, an ice box. So, it's made from a fiberglass or polystyrene. Okay, which are heat insulator that can maintain the coolness of substance inside the box. Okay, 
And then next one is the cooking uh, utensils, okay, made of a wood. Okay, because wood is the insulator, so it cannot uh, absorb heat, all right? Uh, so it's a capable of preventing heat from flowing to the hand while cooking, okay? So this is the example of the insulator. So conductor, fluid, uh, heat can flow. Okay, for conductor, the heat cannot flow, all right? All right, the next one is called as a thermal equilibrium. Okay, so two objects which are in thermal contact can exchange heat energy between them. Okay, so let's say I have a uh, one hot object, okay, one hot uh, hot object, and one other one is a cold object. So you know that heat will transfer from the hot to cold object. Okay, so it will transfer okay until both of the object have the same temperature. Okay. So another example, okay, so let's say I put the cold water, okay, cold water, let's say uh, 10 degrees Celsius. So I put in the uh, hot water, so let's say it's uh, 80 degrees Celsius. So when both of the water mix, you will have a one temperature, right? Okay, so that is called as a thermal equilibrium, right? Means the object, the two objects, okay, the two objects, okay, when they are close to each other, when they touch each other, and the trans heat transfer occur from the hot to the cold object, okay, and then the temperature of the both object becomes same, so means it's already reached the thermal equilibrium, okay. So this is the meaning of thermal equilibrium. The okay, two objects which are thermal contact can exchange heat energy between them, okay. So the heat is then energy is transferred from the object with a high temperature to a lower temperature. So when there is a no net heat, okay. So this is the important point. When there is no net heat of transfer uh, of heat energy transfer between the object, the object are said to be thermal equilibrium. Okay. So when the object is thermal equilibrium, the temperature must be same. Okay. So like a thermometer, right? So let's say I have a thermometer here, okay? And then let's say you put your thermometer under your tongue, okay? So what will happen there? So the energy from your body will transfer to the thermometer, okay? So the, therm the thermometer will expand. The mercury inside the thermometer will expand, okay? Until, okay, until it stop expand, okay, then you read the uh, the temperature, right? So means when you read the temperature at that time when the thermo uh, when the mercury stop expand, so the thermometer you read is actually same as the temperature of the body. So means that time the thermal equilibrium happened. The temperature of the thermometer is same as the temperature of the body. Okay, so this is the uh, the concept of thermal equilibrium that we use in the thermometer, right? So we move to the next slide. Okay, principle of expansion and the contraction of meter. Okay. So the particles in solid vibrate at a fixed position. Okay. So when the solid is heated, the particle vibrate faster and move further apart from one another okay so this caused the volume of the solid to ex, uh, to increase because the solid expand okay let's say if i have the this is the solid okay so it's close to each other right the particle of solid Okay. So this is the particle of solid, right? So it's close to each other. Alright, so when you give the, when the solid is heated, okay, so what will happen to the particle? So the particle will vibrate, right? Vibrate. So and then when it vibrate, okay, so it will move further from one another. So now it move further, okay? They move further from one another. Okay, so you can see here because they have got some space here. Before this, there is no space between the particles, right? So now they got a space between the particles. So means the volume also must be 
increase. Okay, due to the, okay, there is a distance here between those particles. So, the volume also must be increased. So, why? So, because the solid expand, right? Okay, conversely, okay, conversely, all right, when the solid is cool, okay, the particle vibrates slower, okay, and move close to each other, okay. So, let's say now, uh, the, <coughs> okay, the solid is cool, okay, so now it stop vibrate. So, when it stop vibrate, okay, the solid become close to each other, okay. So, now the, col uh, the solid, we call it as a solid contracts, okay, and also the volume of the uh, solid also will be decreased, okay. So, remember when solid is heated, particle vibrate. So, when the particle vibrate, it will move further from each other. Okay, the particle will move further from each other. And then the volume increase. So, we call it as a solid expand. Okay, so when there's a contraction happen, so let's say the, sol the solid is uh, is being cooled down. Okay, you put in the low temperature. So, uh, the particle will stop vibrate. Okay, and it will move uh, closer to each other. And the volume is decrease. Okay, and the solid is contract. Okay. Alright. The particle in liquid and gas move freely. Okay. So when the liquid and gas are heated, okay, the particle move faster and randomly. Okay. So this one also same. Alright. So same like this. Okay. So let's say if I have a, so I use a liquid. So let's say I have a liquid. Okay. So liquid they got a distance right, from each other and they move freely, right? So, when you heat the uh, particles of the liquid, right, of course, it will still start to move, right, move faster, okay, because they got the energy here, okay, so the kinetic energy increase, so it move faster. So, when you move faster, okay, so the distance also will be increased between those particles, right, and then, so this cause the volume also increase okay so when the volume increase means the liquid and gas are expand right so uh later let's say if i put in the cold temperature okay so it will be stop vibrate okay stop vibrate means it will move slower okay and then it will become close to each other okay so it will become close to each other so the distance become closer so mean the volume decrease Okay, so when the volume decrease, we call it as a liquid and the gas contract. Okay, so that is the expansion of the and contraction of the metal. Okay, so what is the uses of the expansion and the contra uh, contraction of metal in daily life, right? Okay, the first one is the mercury. Okay, so the mercury in thermometer is a heat conductor that can expand and contract. Okay, so let's say if you, uh, I put in the boiling water, so uh, the, the volume of mercury will expand. So it will expand, okay. Uh, and if I put the mercury, uh, so if I put a thermometer okay, inside the ice, okay. So inside the ice, so the, uh, the volume of mercury, it will decrease, right. And the mercury will contract. So it will contract, so it will, if the volume will decrease, right. So, and then the reading also will be decreasing, okay. So, we use that concept in the thermometer. Right, and then the next one is the railway tracks, okay. So, the railway tracks have small gaps, okay, between the rails to enable them to expand in the hot weather, okay. So, without this gap, the, tra the tracks will buckle and overlap, okay. So, because you know metal is actually the good uh, heat uh, conductor. Right, so a good heat conductor means it can absorb heat uh, very good. So means when they absorb heat, so this will be expand, right? So you must put a gap here, so there are some space, okay, for the metal to expand here. All right, the next one is a fixed, uh, sorry, this one is a uh, steel bridges, okay, are uh, built with the rollers and a gap on one end. Okay, so this allows the bridges to expand in the hot weather. So this is the fixed end means this one does not move. This one they still got a gap here and this one is a roller. Okay. Right. So this one is for the bridge. Okay. We got the some space here, some gap here. So this one for the bridge to expand. Okay. During the 
hot day, right? So this is the function of the extension and contraction. All right, next one. Okay, a bimetallic strip. So it's usually used in device that depend on the temperature regulation. Okay, so the strip is made from two different type of metal strip that can expand and contract at different rates. So the first one, the example is using a fire alarm. Okay. So fire alarm shown in the diagram 9.14 is designed with a circuit which is incomplete at room temperature. Okay. So when the circuit is exposed to heat from a fire, okay, so the copper strip will expand faster than the steel strip. Okay. So this causes the strip to bend towards the contact point. Okay. So let's say there's a fire here. Okay. So okay, here. The pink one is the copper, right? And the blue one is a iron, okay? So let's see in the room temperature, there will be like a straight like this, okay? So when being heated, okay? So when being, uh, when being heated, okay, let's say there's a fire, okay? The copper, right? So the pink one, okay, the copper will expand faster, okay? Then still, okay? So the copper will extend, uh, expand faster like this. So this is the outside layer, sorry. Outside layer, the copper. So fire, uh, fire is, they say this is fire and this is the copper. So when it expands, okay, it will push, okay, it will push the uh, strip, okay, uh, to the contact point. And then the current can close, right? So the current can close. So like this one, they say it's a normal temperature at the room temperature, okay, so there are straight line like this. And you can see there is no touching between the strip and the contact point. So it means the currents cannot flow here. Okay, current cannot flow because until here there is no connection. Okay, right for this one, when the fire it will be, uh, it will bend to the contact point. So the current can flow from positive to negative. Okay, can complete the circuit. Then the fire alarms will ring. Okay, so this is the function of expansion and the contraction of uh, metal. Okay, so to, uh, to make the fire alarm system. Okay. Alright, the next one is the relationship between type of surface of object and heat absorption and emission. Okay, so have you under why full tanks are painted in the bright colors such as white or silver? Okay, so because bright color it does not absorb a lot of heat, okay? So, therefore, the evaporation of fuel is reduced, okay? So, usually, like our house also, we don't paint, uh, we don't paint our house in a black color, right? So, what happens if you paint the, our house like using a black color? Okay, of course, okay, during a daytime, right? Black color usually absorb heat faster, okay? Then, the, our house, okay, inside, the, uh, inside our house, the temperature will be rising right so will be a hot day all right so that's why we usually use the bright colors okay so this is a bright colors do not absorb a lot of heat okay this is for the fuel train top, uh, truck okay so the ability on an object to absorb or radiate depends on the type of and color of its surface okay so when an object absorbs heat its temperature increases However, when an object radiate, radiates heat, its temperature decreases, okay? Dark and dull surface are better heat absorber and radiators compared to white and shiny surface, okay? White and shiny surface usually is good as a reflector of heat, okay? For the if a dark and dark usually is a heat absorber, good heat, a uh, good heat absorber. Okay, so this one you have to remember. All right, next one. Okay, important of gases. Okay, so there are four types of gases, right? In uh, our air, right? The first one is the uh, oxygen. Okay. And then carbon dioxide, nitrogen, inert gas. Okay, so usually the um, highest percentage, okay, 
the gas that has highest percentage in the our air is a nitrogen, right? Okay, and then followed by the uh, oxygen and the carbon dioxide, and the last one is the inert gas. Okay, so what is the function of oxygen? Of course, for respiration. Okay, uh, combustion of rocket engine. Okay, welding. Okay, or preparing uh, preparation of various compounds. Okay, for carbon dioxide, of course, for photosynthesis. Okay, production of the carbonated drinks. Okay, the one that you you like to drink a Coca Cola like that. So that's one of uh, is a carbon dioxide. Uh, fire extinguisher, extinguisher. Okay, uh, carbon cycle. Okay, and for the nitrogen, okay, production of nitric acid and ammonia. Okay, nitrogen cycle, liquid nitrogen as a cooling agent. Okay, for the inert gas, usually used in the bulk, right? Helium, okay, to fill hot air balloons and weather balloons because helium is very, very light. Okay, neon gas is used in the advertising light. Okay, usually this one, they give a color, right? The one red one, yellow one, green one. So that one, they use a neon gas. Okay, and argon gas is used in the... Uh, light bulbs. Okay, so this is the function of the inert gas. Okay All right, next Okay, next slide Okay, carbon cycle so, how does the carbon cycle maintain, right, the content of carbon dioxide in the air, okay? So, carbon cycle is the cycle that maintains the content of carbon dioxide in the air by continuously taking carbon dioxide from the air and returning it to the air. So, example, okay, so let's see for animals, okay. So, this animal from the process of respiration, you know that we release the carbon dioxide okay so the carbon dioxide is released in the atmosphere okay and then the decomposition okay decomposition from the dead organism okay they also produce the carbon dioxide okay and also okay plants okay if they don't do the process uh, if they didn't do the process of photosynthesis okay they will do the process of respiration so this one also they produce the carbon dioxide Okay, all right, and then okay, the only way that the uh the only way that we use the carbon dioxide okay is only by plants. Okay, only plants that use the carbon dioxide okay for the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so that's why um red plants is very important. Okay, because there is only one way. Okay, that carbon dioxide is being used in the atmosphere right just by photosynthesis also the burning of fossil and fuel also release the carbon dioxide okay process of combustion okay mm. so this is called as the carbon cycle okay this is called as the carbon cycle all right the next one is the oxygen cycle okay so the oxygen cycle means okay it's a continuous cycle that takes oxygen from the air and returns it to the air. So, oxygen needed in respiration, rusting, combustion and decomposition, okay, is obtained from photosynthesis, okay. So, you can see here only one process, right, that release the oxygen, photosynthesis. So, other than that, they use oxygen, okay. Respi uh, for combustion, for respiration, for rusting, okay, for animal respiration, okay, and then for decomposition also they use a uh, oxygen, all right, and then decomposition also use a uh, carbon dioxide being released, all right. Uh, so this is the process of oxygen cycle. So all release the uh, all uh, uh, all using the oxygen, okay, but only one process that release the oxygen that is a photosynthesis okay all right so the next one is a combustion why is a combustion is a combustion is the reaction that occur when the substance is heated in the pre presence of oxygen which produce heat energy and light energy okay 
So if you want to do a process of combustion, so we need the oxygen, fuel and heat. Okay. So we can prevent the combustion if we remove one of the conditions needed for combustion. So let's say if I want to, uh, I want to prevent the combustion, so I just maybe release, uh, remove the oxygen or remove the fuel. Okay. All right. So this will prevent the combustion. Okay. So this is the three things that we need. Right, if you want to do a combustion and also combustion can produce heat and light energy. Okay, so we move on to the question. So diagram uh, 3.1 shows two different methods, X and Y, okay, used to prepare soup for a meal. Okay, so this one is actually they use a uh, coal lighting, okay. Uh, and then uh, for one, three a one name the type of energy used to boil the soap. So of course heat energy, right? And then the next one state uh, state the gas that is involved in the activity in diagram three point one. Okay, so of course combustion is one. So they they we use the oxygen. Okay, so name the substance that are used in the combustion process in the uh, diagram 3.1. Okay, so this one I did for you, this one using a charcoal. Okay, and then this one using a petroleum gas. Okay. The picture is not so clear, sorry. Okay, so state the product of combustion from method X. Okay, so of course, combustion will release carbon dioxide and heat. Okay, carbon dioxide and heat. Okay, after cooking the bottom of the pot, okay, using the method X, okay, so it turned blacker than in method Y. Okay, so explain. Okay, so the first one is the combustion in method X is not complete, so it produces more soot. Okay. So, combustion in method X is not complete, means uh, maybe not enough oxygen, okay. So, you know, if you want to make a complete uh, combustion, you need uh, uh, the, the light of the one, uh, sorry, the color of the, uh, the color of the, um, should be blue, right? Should be blue, okay. Let's say for the Bunsen banana, okay, usually we want the color, okay, should be blue. Alright, the next one, diagram 3.2 shows two types of pots, okay, used to keep the food warm. Okay, so explain which pot can keep the food warm for a long, longer time, okay. So this one using metal, this one using clay pot. So of course, clay pot because it's a good insulator of heat, okay. So use clay pot because it's a good insulator of heat. Alright, the next one, solar panels have a black and rough surfaces. Why? Okay, so black because it absorbs more heat. Okay, it can absorb more heat. And also rough surface. Okay, so if rough surface means should be like this, right? If the smooth surface is like this. So if the rough surface, you can see the surface of area is higher compared to this one, right? So rough surface because it can increase the surface area, okay? So that's why we put the solar panels. It must have a black and rough surface. Okay, so we move on to the next question. Okay, so movement and exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the human body. So this is actually the alveolus. Okay, so this uh, to show the change of gases, right? So let's say there's a deoxygenated blood. Okay, the blue is a deoxygenated blood. So when it flows to the uh, alveolus here, right? So the carbon dioxide will be released okay, to the alveolus and the oxygen from the Alveolus, we go to the uh, red blood cell here and if we combine with the hemoglobin to produce the oxyhemoglobin, right? So the oxyhemoglobin is not a stable, okay? So when you go to the part of the body that uh, lack of the oxygen, it will release the oxygen here, 
so means the oxyhemoglobin be released. So now it become deoxyhemoglobin, right? So that is the process of exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay. So this one, the air is inhaled into the alveolus has a higher concentration of oxygen compared to the concent uh, concentration of oxygen in the blood. So therefore, oxygen will diffuse through the wall of the alveolus into the walls of the capillaries and into the blood. So this is already explained, this one. Okay, and then okay, when, it, when the oxygen goes to the red blood cell. So inside the red blood cell, so they got the hemoglobin. Okay, and then the hemoglobin will combine to the oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin, right, which is an unstable compound and bright red in color. So this is the equation you must remember, right, hemoglobin plus oxygen plus ox uh, become oxyhemoglobin. So you can see there's a two error here. Okay, so means because the oxyhemoglobin Alright, it's not a stable compound. So means like anytime they can change back to oxygen and hemoglobin. So let's say if they goes to one part of the body that is a lack of oxygen, this oxy hemoglobin, okay, we release the oxygen, right, and then only left by the hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin okay. And then the next one, the after it combine, okay, uh, so for this one they combine, right, hemoglobin plus the oxygen become oxyhemoglobin. Now the oxyhemoglobin is transported from the lung to the heart. Okay, so after they got the oxygen, after the red blood cell got the oxygen from the lung, okay, uh, it will transport to the heart okay? and the heart will pump the blood to the other parts of the body. Okay, so when the blood reach the area of the body that has a low concentration of oxygen, the oxyhemoglobin Okay, so when the blood reaches the area around the body cell that has a low concentration of oxygen, the oxyhemoglobin being an unstable compound will decompose to release the oxygen molecule and change back to hemoglobin. Okay, so that happened when I say if the, I already explained. Right, they go to the part that lack of oxygen. Okay, so now the oxy hemoglobin is not stable. Okay, so it will release the oxygen now only it become hemoglobin. Okay, so in the body cell, the diffuse oxygen oxidized glucose molecules into carbon dioxide, water, and energy through the process of cellular respiration. Okay, so as uh, summarized in the following chemical equation. So this one I think you already learned, right? From chapter one, uh, form one, I think. Okay, so cellular respiration means glucose plus oxygen. Okay, we produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So that energy we use, okay, to move, okay, or to do some, uh, some work. All right. So and then where does the carbon dioxide goes? So the carbon dioxide will diffuse, okay, into the blood capillaries, okay, and transported to alveolus to be removed during acceleration okay so in the body cell so let's say now okay, you are uh, the, they already got the oxygen right so let's say the uh, one part of your body is lack of the oxygen okay now the hemoglobin tra already transfer the oxygen to your uh, part of the body down then uh, your cell will do the cellular respiration okay so the cellular respiration will release the carbon dioxide then then the carbon dioxide will diffuse to the blood okay and then it will go back to the lung okay to be released to the alveolus the carbon dioxide and get back the oxygen okay and then travel okay back to the other part of your body okay so that is the uh, flow okay of the uh, blood circulation in our body all right substances that are harmful to the human respiratory system Okay, so the air that we inhale during breath, uh, breathing, okay, may contain substances that can be harmful to the respiratory system. So this is the example, okay, cigarette tar, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, haze, dust and pollen, okay. 
So cigarette tar. Okay, so this is the one toxic substance that found in the cigarette smoke. Okay, so cigarette tar is inhaled as thick. Okay, two and two and uh, epiglottis. Okay, larynx. Okay, bron bronchi bronchioles and also alveoli. Okay, so the cigarette tar also increase the production of mucus and phlegm in the lungs. So why the, do smokers often cough and have flu? So this is the reason because of the tar. Okay. So based on the data, lung cancer patient, most of them are smokers. Okay. So cigarette tar is an example of the substance in the cigarette smoke that can cause lung cancer. So this is the uh, harmful substance okay, inside the cigarette. Okay. They got the ammonia. So actually ammonia is used in the floor cleaner. Right, acetone we use as a paint, okay. Methanol, okay, it's like a fuel, right? And cyanide, okay, it's a poison. Arsenic is actually for the red poison, right? Methane, uh, methane is the sewage uh, fumes, okay. And carbon monoxide, smoke from the motor, vehicle, and exhaust, okay. And butane from the lighter fuel, and cadmium for is made for the alkaline battery. Okay, stearic acid, uh, acid is from candle. Okay, toluene is for industry solvent. Okay, and nicotine is actually for insecticide. Uh, insecticide, uh, insecticide okay, so all this okay, is contained inside the cigarette. Okay, so it's very uh, dangerous. Okay. Alright, next one is the carbon monoxide. Okay, the first one is the carbon monoxide. So the carbon monoxide is usually found in the cigarette smoke and exhaust gases or motor vehicle. So it's a colorless, okay, and odorless gas. This doesn't have any smell. Okay, so when the carbon monoxide diffuses from the alveoli to the blood capillaries, right, so it will combine with the hemoglobin to form a carboxy hemoglobin, which is stable compound, right? So we learned before actually the oxygen we combine with the hemoglobin to become oxyhemoglobin that is unstable. Means it can release the oxygen, okay? Anytime, okay. We say it's the oxygen. There's lack of oxygen there. It will release the oxygen. Then it become only hemoglobin. But let's say if the meat with carbon dioxide, so carbon monoxide plus hemoglobin, it will become carboxy hemoglobin and it's stable. So what does it mean? It's stable. Stable means it cannot be released. The carbon dioxide cannot be released. So now the hemoglobin is cannot be used anymore okay? because it's stable compound, right? So the causes of the so this okay this causes a shortage of oxy hemoglobin in blood that transport oxygen to the body cells. Okay, so due to this shortage, the body cells are able are unable to produce the required amount of energy through cellular respiration. Okay, so can body cell live without energy? Of course not. So that is the uh the the bad, okay, the danger, uh, the danger if you inhale, like say for the carbon monoxide, okay, it's a very uh, poisonous, uh, poisonous uh, gas, right? So because it uh, can combine with hemoglobin, becoming a carboxy hemoglobin that is very, is very stable. Okay, now you don't have enough of the hemoglobin to transport the oxygen. Okay, so when you don't have enough of uh, oxygen means you cannot do a respiration, a process of respiration means you will be lack of energy. Right, the next one is the sulfur dioxide. Okay, so the sulfur dioxide that is released into the air is normally produced by combustion of coal from the power station. Okay, so the sulfur dioxide is a colorless gas with a pungent smell. So it irritates the air passage, uh, passage causing cough difficulty in breathing bronchitis and also lung cancer okay so this is the uh, this is the sulfur dioxide right and the next one is a nitrogen dioxide so nitrogen dioxide that is released into the air is normally from the combustion of fuels such as petrol and diesel in motor vehicles so nitrogen dioxide is a brown color gas with a pungent smell. So this gas irritates the passage and also uh, causes cough, difficulty in breathing and also asthma. Okay. So this is nitrogen dioxide. 
Right, the next one is the haze, dust and pollen. So haze, dust and pollen are solid particles which are fine light and suspended in the air. Okay, so the smoke okay, from the uh, motor vehicle exhaust, open burning and forest fires produce haze and dust. I think last year, right? Okay, last year, okay, uh, we have this um, like haze, right? Until we have to close the school. Okay, so that one is actually from the forest fires. Okay, so pollen, uh, pollen released from enters into air is carried by the wind over long distance in all direction. Okay, so the haze, dust and pollen irritate the respira uh, respiratory system and causes respiratory disease as such as asthma. Okay, asthma is a difficulty to breathe, right? Okay. The next one is the homeostasis, okay? So what is the mean by homeostasis? So homeostasis refers to the maintenance of internal environment environment in the body of an organism such as temperature, water, pH and blood pressure to be balanced in stable condition. Okay, so the maintenance of the internal environment in the body okay, of organism in balance and stable condition allows all living process in the body of organism to work well. So if the internal condition are not balanced, for example, the temperature too high, the cell of the organism may die. Okay. So this is actually, let's say, uh, you are in the hot place. Okay. So what your body will do, it will release a sweat. Right. Uh, so that is called example of the homeostasis. Okay. Or let's say, uh, if you feel cold. Okay. So the volume of your uh, urea will increase. Okay. Uh, so that is the uh, example of the homeostasis. Okay, so let's see the first one. So homeostasis control process. Okay, so when inter, inter, internal environment in our body such as body temperature increase, the control center of the brain will detect changes. Okay, so the brain will detect the changes and a corrective mechanism will then take place and the temperature will reduce it to its normal range. Okay, so when the body temperature decreases, a corrective mechanism will take place and the temperature will rise into a normal range. Okay, so let's say the temperature increase. Okay, so it will have, uh, we do the corrective uh, mechanism, our body, we do a corrective mechanism. Okay, and then the temperature decrease, go back to the normal temperature. Okay, uh, so that is, this is the cycle of the homeostasis, right? So the first one is a regulation of water content, okay? So system that involve in water regulation are the excretory system and endocrine system. So example of organ involved are kidney and brain, okay? So let's say from start from the normal water level, okay? And then let's say during... Uh, hot day. Okay, right, normal water level. Okay, so water content in the in body increase when we drink water. So let's say one day you drink a lot of water. Okay, so the normal water level increase. Okay, and then it will detect by brain here. Okay, so what brain will do? So the brain will see, uh, stimulate the secretion of hormone. Okay, so that the kidney increase the production of urine. Right? And then more urine is produced. Okay, so when you when the more urine is produced, mean the water level will go with uh sorry the water level will decrease. So now the water body uh, water content of the body decrease. Now it go back to the normal water level. Okay, so the brain is this one. This one use the when the brain stimulate the secretion of the hormone. This one we use the endocrine system. Okay, endocrine system. And for the kidney, they call a uh, kidney. Okay, so the kidney is for the excretory system, right? So let's say uh, you drink, uh, you didn't drink a lot of water that day. So mean the normal water level it decrease. Okay, and then the water uh, so decrease. So and then you be detected by the brain. Okay, and then the brain will stimulate the secretion of uh, hormone, right? By uh, endocrine system that we have 
Okay, so the, the, uh, the, the kidney will decrease the production of urine. So this one, the kidney is under the excretory system. And then you will feel thirsty. So if you're thirsty, you will drink water. Okay, so then the water now, water content in the body increase, right? And then the, it will go back to the normal water level. So this is the regulation of water content. Right, next one. Regulation of the body temperature, right? So, systems that are involved in the regulation of body temperature are excretory system and also endocrine system. So, example of an organism involved is skin, brain and also skeletal muscle, okay? So, start with the normal temperature, okay? And then they say during the hot day, okay? So you will, uh, the, during the hot day, okay, your body will, uh, the temperature will increase, okay. And then the brain, okay, the brain will detect the changes, okay, and then it will do the corrective mechanism. Okay, the blood vessel will dilate, okay. So when the blood vessel it dilates, okay, now let's say, this is the normal, let's say normal temperature. Okay, when the blood vessel it dilates mean, now it become Bigger like that. Okay, so now means the there's more of the uh, red blood cell will can close, right? Okay, actually red blood cell is not only transferred or transporting the oxygen. They also can transport heat. Okay, so when it pass through the uh, blood vessel, it will release the heat at the same time from our skin. Okay. So the blood vessel we dilates, dilates, okay, and then the has the B flat, okay. So they say this is your skin, okay. So your hair skin will be like this, okay, like this, okay. So mean and then increase weighting, okay, and then activity of the skeletal muscle and certain hormone secre uh, secretion will reduce, okay, eventually, and decrease the body temperature and also you will produce the less urine okay this is for uh, during the hot day so this one you have to remember okay blood vessel dilates it has flat his uh, has skin hair right skin hair will be flat okay increase weighting okay? and the activity of the skeletal mus muscles and certain hormones will be reduced okay and also the urine will be less produce uh, produce uh, less all right and then it will go back to the normal body temperature okay as if you during the uh, cold day, uh, cold day okay okay during the cold day okay so our body temperature will decrease and then it will be detected by brain okay so what the brain will do okay so it will uh, blood vessel will constrict it okay, means it becomes smaller. Okay, so what happens when it becomes smaller, right? So means the red blood cell, okay, there's not so much of the red blood cell can pass through. Means the heat will not be released, okay? And the hair stands erect, okay? So before this, it's like this. So erect will be like this, your hair skin. So what happened here when the hair of skin, uh, has, uh, skin hair is Erect, so there will be a, a air molecule that will be filled okay, between the hair skin here, and what the uh, what the uh, the molecule of air will do actually molecule of air is a good insulator, okay, so it will prevent the heat from being released out from the body, okay, so that is the Function the hair stand erect. Okay, sometimes if you watch the horror movie also, right, your skin hair also will become erect like this, and suddenly you feel like uh, cold, something like that, right? Uh, so that is the function of it. And then decrease the sweating, okay, and skeletal muscle will contract and relax, okay, actively, and it will cause the individual to shiver, okay, to increase the body temp. Picture. It will contract, okay, so that's why you become shiver, so to increase the body temperature and at the same time, the certain hormone will be secreted to increase the body 
Motel uh, metabolism. Okay, so when the cold day, uh, the uh, endocrine system will release the hormone. Okay, the hot day it will reduce the hormone produce. Okay, so this is the function. How the homeostasis? Okay, first for uh, body temperature. Okay, and this one is for. Okay, and this one is for water content. Okay. So this one is actually I uh, already um, explain. Right. How about in animals? Okay, this one is for human. Okay, for animals. Okay. So for animals like cats and dogs, they do not have uh, sweat glands. Okay, except on their sole. So how do they maintain the homeostasis? Okay, for the cat, usually they will lick okay, their fur. Okay, and for the dog, usually they will hang my tongue up so that the temperature decreases. And also for the cat, the my uh, the fur, okay, we stand erect when it's cold to trap heat. So this one is same like human. Okay. Alright, and another one for, let's say, uh, for another animal like lizard. Okay, so lizard regulate the body temperature when the surrounding temperature changes. Okay, so for when the cold surrounding the body activities becomes slower, muscle function more slowly, okay, movement becomes slower, metabolism rate decrease, body temperature decrease, uh, decrease. Okay, at the heart surrounding the heart beat faster, movement becomes faster, metabolism rate increases, body temperature increases. Okay, so this is for the lizard, okay, they can regulate the body temperature according to the surrounding. Okay, how about the snail? So how does the snail and bees uh, maintain homeostasis toward the increase in surrounding temperature? Uh, for the snail, they will lose a lot of water through evaporation on the skin surface. Okay, so actually uh, if you can see the skin is like a moist, right, for the snail. Okay, and produce fluids and looks for humid place to reduce water loss. Okay. So this uh, this is how the snail right uh, maintain the uh, maintain the body temperature okay depend on the surrounding okay if uh, during a hot day they will lose uh, a lot of water okay during the evaporation sorry for the cool day okay for the hot day they will look for the humid place uh, to the to reduce the water loss okay. Alright, the next one is the bee. For the bee has a waxy skin layer and loss of water vapor occur across, oh sorry, occurs through its spiracles. Okay, so this one when the whole day, okay. Right, and then when the hot day, right, it's the closest spiracles between two breathing movements in re to reduce water loss. Okay, so this is the hemostasis for, uh, for animal. Okay, let's see from for plants. Okay, so for plants, okay, so you can see this is a banana leaf, right? So in the afternoon, the banana leaf will curl up, right? They are leaf, okay? And the, during the cold day, they will just normal. But let's say for the hot day, right, it will curl up their yeah, leaf like that, okay? So water from plants are lost through a process known as transpiration. Okay, so during the transpiration, okay, plants lose water from leaf in the form of water vapor to the surrounding through the stoma. Okay, so the stoma is, uh, okay, the stoma is controlled by the gut cell, right? So this involves the transport system in plants, okay? So transpiration actually helps water to absorb and carry water and mineral from the soil to all parts of the Body. So evaporation from of water from the leaf cools the plants during hot days. Okay. So actually, you know the root is absorbing the water and mineral okay, inside the soil here. So how does the leaf can get the water from the uh, roots here? Because roots at the bottom, right? And then leaf here is at uh, the upper part here. So how does uh, okay? Let's see at this part they got the water and mineral. Okay, so during a transpiration, right, during the hot day, the water will be absorbed, right? 
So means there will be like a uh, one force, right? One force that attract, right? They attract the water to go up. So then the water from the soil also will go up also. Since because so they say the sun here, so all the water will go up, right? And then the water here will go up to from the root to the uh, leaf to replace the water that be uh that they release okay, during the process of transpiration. So they say there is no uh, process of transpiration. What will happen, right? So what will happen here, so means the water only can be at the bottom part here. Okay, it cannot go up okay, because there is no force to attract the, uh, the water to go up. So that's why we need the transpiration. So the transpiration, it will, it will Take the water from here, say from the leaf, go up, right? And then this one, the water also can follow, okay? So this, they go to the other part of the plant, okay? Uh, so this transpiration on the leaf produces force that draws water from the stems of plants, okay? Roots of plants absorb water and mineral from the soil. So first one, the root absorb water and then the transpiration will, will, uh, will we produce a force that we attract the water from the bottom to go to the other part of the plants, right? Okay, so I think I stop until here first, right? So we continue on Friday. So I hope we can try to do the scrapbook okay, that I asked. This is for your PBB, okay? So make sure you have a group four or five. I don't want so many people in the group, okay? Uh, and divide work. Okay, who we do this topic, this topic, if you have any question, you can search information in the uh, internet, right? Okay, so there's a lot of information in the internet. And please do not simply uh, copy paste, okay? Uh, try to read first, okay? Uh, do not just simply copy paste from the website and put in your, in your scrapbook, okay? Sometimes uh, uh, it's not suitable. Okay, read first. Okay, so see you on Friday. Okay, thank you, class. Bye.